It's a challenge that's growing day by day and the numbers prove it. For every 1 lakh population, there are only 176 police personnel. Which means that there is just one policeman for 568 people. However, when it comes to rate of crime, for every 1 lakh population, the number of offences is 192. For Indian law and order, the odds are stacked against it. But in a world that's increasingly going digital, information and communication technology is paving the way for a more effective criminal justice system. Let's see how. Cyberabad district in Telangana state is a well-known IT hub in India. Here, information technology isn't just confined to offices and IT parks. It is only present, keeping its citizens safe and maintaining law and order. It's a change that's been long overdue. Policing in India, even today, is largely based on the 1861 Police Act, a colonial hand-me-down that is training to keep up with the 21st century demands. The load on the police station, on police officers has increased so much that the traditional uh, methods of policing have uh, really taken back seat. There are several traditional methods of policing which have over a period of time lost their uh, impact on criminals and people who disturb public order. So the challenge here is to update our systems. We need to use technology more and more. Policing and maintaining law and order requires prevention of crime, investigation and solving crimes, providing essential community services, example verification and certification of individuals. In the new digital age, all these tasks have to update themselves. After the introduction of internet into the world, it is a one big world. Crimes can be committed sitting anywhere on the planet. Cyber crimes, to online frauds, cyber terrorism, terrorism being provoked in other countries through the internet, through various media. How do we tackle all this? The use of technology is a force multiplier. Cyberabad is one of the foremost police districts in India to go digital in nearly every facet of its functioning. A walk through the station shows how IT is everywhere. Police officers man computers that are equipped with eCOPS, a special software application that has digitized all police processes, including filing the first information reports or FIRs. Earlier, FIRs was a paper-based process that a complainant had to file only at their local station. Now, a complaint can be filed from any police station equipped with eCOPS. The interface is so simple that it can be operated even at a constable level. But the true beneficiaries are the citizens. ICT improves transparency as digital records can't be changed as easily as paper ones. It also makes processes more people friendly. For example, FIR copies are printed out immediately and handed to the complainant. ECOPS also has a criminal database covering districts across Telangana and Andhra Pradesh, which, thanks to the internet, can be accessed at the click of a button. Above all, ICT helps streamline a criminal justice system that is overrun by files and paperwork. A lot of information do exist at the police thanas and there was no mechanism where it could be shared at a very short notice. You know, they still exist, the old dark system still existed. The people used to carry files from the thana to the courts or to the higher official. But with the coming of the computers, setting up of the network system, it ensured that at a click of a button, the information could be made available to the designated people. ECOPS was launched for a limited region in southern India. But then in 2008, something happened to wake up the entire nation.
The Mumbai terror attacks of 26th November shook India, in particular its law enforcement agencies. That's when the CCTNS was launched. CCTNS or Crime and Criminal Tracking Network is a state-of-the-art IT network to digitally connect 35 states and union territories of India. CCTNS will contain every database of the NCRB or National Crime Records Bureau and will make it accessible to any of the nearly 14,000 police stations across the country. As a centralized database for all police districts, it will help track criminals faster and more easily than ever before. You can track activities and understand the modus operandi of different criminal groups. All right. You could identify nexus between you know, different criminals and bust them you know, before they could actually happen. Uh, you could share this information with intelligence agencies, you know, to prevent uh, any criminal activity from happening. It's an ambitious project that is still ongoing. With nearly 60% of criminal records have been digitized under CCTNS, the day may not be far when paper is a thing of the past. There is uh, a software which is uh, created by Nodal Agency, which is NCRB. Uh, which is called the CAS software and uh, that needs to be customized you know for different states and implemented and the whole idea of having a CAS software is so that there is um, common standards and protocols for you know information to be shared. Meanwhile Indian police has other challenges to take on like training an IT friendly police force. This is the biggest challenge we face Introducing technology is on the one side is perhaps more easy than gearing up the officers and the manpower of the police department on how to utilize it and how to uh, make it more uh, effectively functional. But IT isn't just about software and networks because every new age police force needs its new age gadgets. Surveillance is an essential part of policing and is critical to preventing crimes before they happen. And since police personnel can't be everywhere at all times of the day, their job is done by closed-circuit television cameras or CCTVs. CCTVs may have the word TV in them, but they are very different from what we have at home. While standard TV openly broadcasts signals to the public, CCTV is not openly transmitted. It uses either wireless or wired transmission to send the broadcast from video cameras to a specific monitor or recording device. At Cyberabad, transmission or feed comes in from all across the city. Now we are in Cyberabad Command Control Center, very in centrally we will see the live feeds coming across the several hour limits. Now that uh, IT cub area entirely covered under uh, CCTV cameras, those, those feeds can be viewed. Apart from that, now that uh, community CCTV program is there, there community people are erecting the CCTV cameras, that feed also can be fed over here and can be seen. CCTV allows for constant monitoring of public places, sensitive infrastructure and even GPS tracked vehicles like radio cabs. Response is very huge response. Uh, now that uh, even community people are uh, uh, associated with this project, now that we have a called community CCTV project, wherein similar colleagues, presidents, local, local, local people are coming forward, business establishments, they are associating themselves with us and erecting the CCTV cameras, installing the CCTV cameras in their localities. That feed is being brought to the police station level, then to zone level, then to command control center. So it is having a huge impact, public are willingly cooperating, apart from ourselves, our initiative, even citizens also are coming forward to join in this unique uh, activity. CCTV recordings can also provide invaluable clues to crack cases. So many cases, when you bomb blast, an image of the suspect was brought in the CC camera that has been evaluated and 
studied. So there are a number of cases wherein you have the live feeds, wherein CCTV cameras, images are helpful in the investigation office and detecting the cases. CCTVs are a great example of IT multiplying the police force and taking over where human beings can't. In recent years, other smart devices have also eased the policeman's burden, especially when it comes to traffic management. Like eCops takes care of general criminal offences, eChalan is a software application to address traffic offences. For the first time in India, we have integrated two units, Hyderabad and Cyberabad, both around 4,000 square kilometers with about 45 lakh vehicles. These two units have been integrated on the eChalan system. eChalan teams up with a host of gadgets, like a body or handheld camera that policemen can use to document the offender and his vehicle. It can also be operated on devices like tablets, where with a few clicks, Policemen can check the person's past record, register a complaint and issue chalans. We have tried to bring in a system where they need not pay and this transaction which leads to suspicions of corruption in the public is done away with. With ICT tools, the police can reinvent its relationship with citizens. From an agency that intimidates to one that provides invaluable services to the community. The police also provides you services in terms of giving you permission for procession, for servant verification, tenant verification. Now this can be done at the comfort of, uh, of your home. One of the most critical services that has been transformed in recent years is passport verification. This essential document has been notorious for taking weeks, even months to be issued or renewed. But now, ICT is cutting short the wait period for police verification. Already www.passportindia.gov.in dwara only unit headquarters for a hard copies download yeskoi, mali mafil officers Everything from accessing the applicant's records to signing off on their verified status is done via simple handheld devices. All the information is fed back into centralized databases at passportindia.gov.in where the application can now be processed completely. Along each step of the process, the applicant is alerted via text message. Well, I have applied my passport day before yesterday. Last day, I am having my passport verification at Passport Seva Kendra. And today I got my police verification. I feel that uh, technology has improved a lot and this has added much uh, time saving to me. Slowly but surely, the scales of justice are tipping in favour of ICT, transforming the way law enforcement agencies operate. The change is coming fast and it will be inevitable in a few uh, years, I feel. After the break, we enter the virtual world of cyber policing. digital revolution sweeps across the world, it has its good impact and its bad. Among the negative fallouts has been the increase in cybercrime, that unique brand of criminal activity that exploits citizens of the virtual world. In the last few decades, cybercrime has taken the shape of cyber terrorism, economic offences like bank scams, prize or reward scams, job frauds and social networking offences. With regards to the social networking or social media offences, normally 
most of the victims uh, are women. They share their information like photographs or the phone number and uh, they get uh, cheated uh, in the name of marriage or in the name of uh, threatening that uh, he will post the photographs of the victim in the social, net social networking site or in the pornographic site. What sets cyber crime apart is that they can be committed under a veil of anonymity. Crimes are no longer localized and can be committed from any part of the country or world as long as they are connected digitally, removing them from the area of jurisdiction where the crime is committed. And so, India's police force must also step into the virtual crime-fighting world. For example, in cases of online harassment and intimidation, complainants approach the cybercrime department. Officials register the complaint and contact the social networking site to track down the offender and remove offending materials. It also contacts the internet service provider to track down the exact location of the offender through his IP address. In the real world, we all have home addresses. On the internet, every computing device has an IP or internet protocol address. It is a string of numbers separated by full stops and is unique to the device. IP addresses are used by computers to talk virtually to each other and they are also used by cybercrime fighters to track down criminals. So we have introduced a social media monitoring center. We have a software which crawls across 40 million sites including YouTube and all other social media. And based on the keywords which we have given, it picks up conversations across the world on what's happening, what people are discussing about various issues. So we get a, a pulse of the, uh, what the people are thinking. Even localized issues uh, are what concerns us. We try to keep a tab on how someone is talking about extremist organizations, terrorist organizations. Then if it is re reaching a certain level, we need to intervene, we track him, we bring him and counsel him and find out more about him. But the cyber crime branch of the police doesn't only investigate, it also uses it to connect meaningfully. In the Cyberabad police district, social media has become a powerful way to reach out to the community. Free applications like WhatsApp are being used by various departments to establish a direct link to citizens who can send them text messages, photos, voice and even video messages from their personal mobile phones. Then we have outreach mechanisms like the Facebook pages for all police stations. Then uh, we have a WhatsApp system for not only for the public to complain, we giving a solution to them, but also for our own functioning. We have about 20 groups within the Cyberabad police and we every day we communicate and uh, use this social media in our own daily functioning. In fact, mobile phones have allowed police to extend their services through safety apps that cater to special groups, for example, female IT professionals of Cyberabad. The app allows people in distress to hit the power button, which acts as a panic button. The signal is received at the command center, where they locate the mobile phone through GPS tracking. Whenever they are in distress, if they simply press the panic button, siren will come over here. Immediately the working employees who are over here, they will immediately escalate the things to the nearest to mobiles. And even geographically, our location can be tracked over here. So our longitude, latitude can be seen so that uh, we can escalate the things rightly accordingly. Virtual technologies like these have ironically given a more human and accessible face of the police than even a brick and mortar police station. After the break, we see how IT is transforming some of the oldest forensic sciences used in crime fighting through the power of computing. No police investigation is complete without collection of evidence. And when it comes to evidence of physical crimes, one of the oldest and most reliable clues has been the fingerprint. The fingerprint is a faint impression, 
often invisible to the naked eye. It is a labyrinth of lines, ridges, whirls and loops. Identifying these patterns and classifying them is a unique science because almost no two human beings have the same print. Fingerprinting is an old science, one that was developed in British India as far back as the 19th century. But in the 21st century, it's a job for facts or the fingerprinting analysis and criminal tracking system. And here's how far the science has come. Before ICT, fingerprints were stored as manual or paper records. After ICT, prints are stored as digital and numerical codes. Before ICT, prints from the crime scene were matched manually and painstakingly against hundreds of reference prints. After ICT, they are digitally matched simply by applying an algorithm or a computing formula accessible at a few clicks of the mouse. Before ICT, finding a match could take as long as days and weeks. After ICT, finding a match can take anywhere from a few minutes to a maximum of few hours. At the heart of this technology is image processing and pattern recognition. A system by which images are converted into binary codes of ones and zeros. Once a print is reduced to numerics, matching it against numerical codes is much easier. This numerical matching is used to recognize patterns and identify them. Manually we used to compare with, you, you used to keep the query print here and then uh, see the uh, reference print one by one. Query print, reference print, query print, reference print. Sometimes after say few minutes, we used to remember that query print that used to go in our memory and then uh, seeing the reference print one by one. And wherever we find some similarity, we used to go for thorough matching. Uh, but that part is now being done by the computers. The best part is uh, the computer also abstracts the minutia. Final matching is done on the basis of minutia. So those minutia are uh, abstracted by the computers. By transforming policing, computers and digital technologies are proving that they are the ultimate tool to deliver justice. Whether it is day-to-day -day policing and surveillance or efficient investigation, whether it is delivery of special services or ensuring that the country remains free from terror, ICT is proving to be a worthy partner with law enforcement agencies and keeping alive the dream of a safe and just India. Please send your suggestions and comments to Vigyan Prasar, A50, Instagram.